All right, so this is part two of the marks of a good song leader. A good song leader. And hopefully you're not thinking that, boy, that doesn't seem like that important of a job. And uh, that could be that it wasn't that exciting to you. Maybe you're, you're, uh, you're unimpressed with the ministry of the song leader or your song leader didn't excite you very well. <coughs> this is something you can do. These are some of the things you can make sure are in that ministry. I'm telling you, a church service needs to be exciting. Uh, our God is, is, is interesting. And she was like, well, I'm not interested in him. Was it because he's not interesting or because I have childish things that draw my attention? Are other sparkly lights that draw my attention away from who truly is interesting? Because regardless of whether you think he's interesting or not, he is interesting. And a song service that's lifting up God, um, that's supposed to be according to his excellent greatness, should be a wonderful song service, as best as it can be. We should lift up our voices in excitement because we have an exciting God. If there's no excitement, it does not reflect our exciting God. God is exciting. So this is part two of Marks of a, uh, of a Good Song Leader. We had leadership and we had preparation. Now we have edification. Edification. All right, there's a lot that Paul says about building up the body of Christ, building up the body of Christ. There in 1 Corinthians 14, uh, it's talking about uh, talents and, and spiritual gifts and uh, the church service. The theme there is edification. 20 times in that, church, in that chapter, we find the words edify, know, and understand. Edify, know, and understand. And then later on in 1 Corinthians 14, 26, he says, Let all things be done unto edifying. Unto edifying. Let all things be done unto edifying. So the song leader teaches the congregation to appreciate edification over entertainment. On ensemble, I remember going to so many buffets. Uh, we, we did so many of those uh, on the, the summer trip that afterwards you thought, I don't want to go to a buffet again. <laughs> um, and, or, or during candy sale, I know the, the women that will take the children candy selling and, and they're grabbing a fast food here, grabbing a lunch here, or think, oh, I just want a home-cooked meal. That's what I want. I just want a home-cooked meal. So um, our children don't want home-cooked meals. If we said, you know what, tonight it's just cake and ice cream, they'd be pumped. Um, but a good parent wants to teach the children to appreciate uh, good food, wholesome food. And with the, they don't say, children, now I want you to plan the menu this month. Not wise. A parent wants to plan the menu and say, this is healthy food, and son, finish those vegetables. Do this. Uh-uh, before you eat that, eat that. Because I'm trying to teach my children to appreciate good food. And same thing with the church. We, we have to teach the people what will build them up. And new believers don't know. And unbelievers don't know. And we need to remember... As, as you get to be an older believer, you can't lose the excitement about good things. And so, in other words, um, they, they think entertainment is where it's at. Keep me amused. And you say, no, 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 no. At church, there's much better things. That's, there's edification. There's the building up of the believer. And that's important. So, a, a child thinks eating should be all cake and ice cream. An adult knows the value of a good meal. A restaurant must decide who it will build its menu around, children or adults. Even if a restaurant decides to be child-orientated, the owner knows that it is the adults who are going to be paying the bill. So they have to have something there that the adults will be interested in, typically. Unbelievers and young or backslidden believers don't certainly... Maybe a new believer has that new part of him that can appreciate it, but certainly unbelievers and backslidden believers um, cannot appreciate healthy music. They want music that is more entertaining. Okay? They don't understand the, the importance of healthy eating. Healthy eating. All right? 
As you get a little older, you got to watch what you eat. Um, oh, I, you, you hear the people, i got to watch that. I can't drink that at nighttime before I go to sleep. I've been through enough sleepless nights where if I drink that caffeine or if I eat that, I'm going to have heartburn. Uh, when I eat this, I, when I eat this, it's better for me. When I eat this, this is good. And I eat, okay, you, you, you learn over time what, what, you, what, what, you, uh, what foods punish you <laughs> and what foods build you in the right way, make you strong and healthy. The song leader must not bring the music down to the children. He must bring the children up to the right type of music. Just like a good parent must teach his children to appreciate meat and vegetables. Now, I don't think that you uh, have to completely stay away from entertainment in your songs. Um, I, I like the song, you know, as long as you don't get out of control, you, you have your, um, my God is so big, so strong, and so mighty, there's nothing my God cannot do. I like songs that, that have action in there. Um, uh, deep and wide, deep and wide, or even uh, 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 the, the song is Soldier. Um, and uh, what, what song am I thinking of? I'm in the Lord's army. I'm in the Lord's army. And you can have fun with that. I'm, I may never uh, walk like an Eskimo or <laughs> whatever, uh, go, go, but I'm in the Lord's army. And, or, or you're in Mexico where you're, you're tipping your sombrero to people with the wide brim. You know, and you're having some fun. That's, is that, how does that edify me to tip my sombrero? It's just, it's just fun. There's some fun. It's like, I may never take a trip to Mexico, eat a cheesy taco, uh, wear a big sombrero. I may never, um, whatever the, the rest of part of that is. Um, anyway, but I'm in the Lord's army, army si senor, <laughs> and you do those things. Some of that is entertainment. Um, but our music, the main part of our music, even though you say, well, okay, Mr. Mitchell said it's fine on bus to, to completely go for entertainment. I didn't say that. We have, we have precious little time with these kids. So have fun, but make sure you send them home with something from God. In the music you sing and in the lessons. When they go home, uh, think about that. What songs? I, I remember uh, my, my daughter. Boy, uh, there's, the, there's the song that, that, that's, that's against smoking and drinking and dirty talk. Okay? Smoking, drinking, fist fighting, dirty talk. That's not the way to walk the believer's walk or, or however the song goes. But anyway, that was the phrase she remembered. Just the first part. She, she's at home muttering, smoking, drinking, fist fighting, dirty talk. Smoking, drinking, fist fighting, dirty talk. And that was the phrase she kept muttering to herself my, when she was younger, my four-year-old. And I'm like, you know, there's more to that song. You're just chanting, smoking, drinking, fist fighting, dirty talk. Um, it's, it, the song is about leaving that behind and going on to walk the, 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 the right type of walk, you know. Um, so anyway, you just correct that real fast. It's like, what? Where'd you learn that on the Sunday school bus? So, so you, we want to make sure that our, our kids are, are going home with something. And so that was my prayer Sunday morning. I'm like, Lord, I, I need to hear from you today. And so do the children that will get on my bus today. Please speak to me and speak, please speak to them and speak through me to them. Lord, uh, they need to hear from you. They, I got nothing for them. You, you have everything for them. Okay, so um, we, we consider once again Ephesians 5.19 and Colossians 3.16. Our music should minister in three directions. Our music ministers in three directions. Ephesians 5.19 tells us uh, we sing to the Lord, to the Lord. So he is our main direction. But Ephesians 5.19 also says that part of, part of our, uh, our music uh, is ministered, uh, the direction is to ourselves, to ourselves. And then Colossians 3.16 says toward others toward others. So music, with, with these three passages, Ephesians 5.19, I'm sorry, two passages, Ephesians 5.19 and Colossians 3.16, we see that music is to the Lord, and it's to ourselves, and it's to others. All right? Um, the main thing is to the Lord. I, I, I heard somebody mistakenly say, all music is to the Lord and only to the Lord. Um, you say, well, well, no, uh, with your, your, to, to sing to our, it's, he's, he's the main audience. He needs to be honored with our music. But the Bible in these passages, you know, to ourselves and to others, there are, there are three groups, ourselves, others, God, 
that it's directed toward. So that means as you open the hymnal, there's going to be music that goes uh, one or more of those directions. So we'll look at those in, in just, a minute, uh, just a minute. Then um, I want you also to, uh, to see here that uh, um, a song should be selected because of its message. And again, un under the idea of edification, you should look at the message and decide if it's edifying. So um, if there's no message or if it's weak, then there's no edification or there's weak edification. Then another thing that a song leader can fix is what if there's words that aren't understood? It could have the most wonderful meaning, but if the people don't know what it's saying, then that's something the, they're not going to be edified. So the song leader can fix those things. So even with the song Beulah Land, I'm longing for thee. Okay, what a beautiful song. But you want to tell people, what is Beulah Land? Research that out. Even just the idea of, uh, of in, in the mind, um, not equating the promised land with heaven. Um, that promised land is that, is that place of victory on this earth. Okay, um, and, and so just making those things clear with, for people. M remember in Come Thou Fount, where it says, uh, Here I raise mine Ebenezer. <laughs> Most people are going to think you're, you're, you're talking about the Christmas carol with Ebenezer Scrooge. Okay? The, the average person coming in and here I raise mine Ebenezer. Uh, and you're thinking, wow, that, here I raise mine Ebenezer. Okay? The, the stone of help. Uh, that idea. And you can kind of, kind of go back and explain it real fast or something. Dr. Vogelin the other night was explaining some things to us. Oh, Sunday morning. I'm sorry. Sunday morning with Verily. Verily. The Sunday morning crowd doesn't know what verily means. And so he said, this word means truly, truly. Verily, verily, I say unto you, verily, verily, message ever new. And as you sing that, he was, he was teaching them what that word means. Um, a mighty fortress is our God. You come across those words, uh, Lord Sabaoth, his name from age to age the same. Uh, and they're like, Lord Sabaoth. And they, they stumble over the pronunciation. And then the song, they miss a few words, wondering, what does that mean? Not edifying, unless they know what that means. So maybe look at the song ahead of time and explain some of those things. It is the song leader's job to explain such things in a concise manner. However, it will get old pretty quickly if every song comes with a 10-minute explanation. All right? You get up and they go, okay, grab your Bibles. It's going to get old for everyone, even the pastor. Be like, can we just sing it? And can I preach? Okay. So there needs to be a balance. The song server should be about singing. <laughs> Not you giving this long explanation with a little bit of singing. The song service. Let's sing. Let's do some singing. So quickly explain something and get us singing. Um, not listening to the song leader's endless explanations. The people need to be taught and reminded to think about the words of a song. No matter how spiritual the songs are, if the people are not meditating on the message, no edification is accomplished. So the song leader can remind the people to be focused on the things of the Lord. Here's an example. You might say, uh, folks, let's sing unto the Lord today. Let's put aside the cares of this life and turn our hearts to Christ. Let's think about these words of this glorious song and let the message sink down deep into our hearts. Okay? You got, you're, you're guilty. I'm guilty. You're guilty. I'm guilty. And I know you're guilty. Because if I'm guilty, you're guilty. Of sitting in church sometime and not paying attention. Mike, you're musical. So there's other things you could focus on, right? Singing this part. Your tone. And then you could, you could, you could put all your mind onto singing this tone nicely or singing this other part. I wonder if I could do tenor. I wonder if I can sing alto three octaves lower. You know, you. Um, and then the song is over and you're like, musically I accomplished something. What was the message? Well, I don't know. I don't know. But I kept myself interested by creating musical challenges. It's like, did you have to keep yourself interested? The, the message wasn't interesting enough? Like, <laughs> well, you put it that way. We're, we're guilty. We're guilty. Okay, next... Song leader's job, uh, spirituality, spirituality. 
So that's, that's the a marks of a good spirit, a song leader, spirituality. Now in John 4, 24, it says, God is a spirit and they that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. And then I was looking up this verse in verse 23, it says, he was speaking of true worshipers and he said, the father seeketh such to worship him. So that's the verse before John 4, 23. The father seeketh such to worship him. And I just wrote down here, isn't it sad that the one who is so worthy of worship would have to seek for someone to worship him? John 4, 23 says, the father seeketh such to worship him. But there's people out there that are shooting worship all sorts of different directions. And God isn't so desperate for worship that he'll take any kind he can get. Aren't you glad? Because he, he says, the, the Father is, uh, um, God is a spirit, and they that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. So there's two, there's two uh, qualifications of right worship, spirit and truth. So this one right here we're looking at is spirituality. Our song services should be spiritual. The music is not to please the flesh. It should not be worldly. In this day when the world's music is creeping into the Lord's house, song leaders must be on guard continually against this type of thing. If it sounds like the world's dance or sensual entertainment, it is not fitting for the house of God. Romans 12.2 reminds us, don't be conformed. To this world. Don't look like them. Don't look like them. All right? And God loves this world, but there's a world system that is anti-God. And don't look like you belong to that system because he doesn't love that system. He loves the people that are enslaved by that system. And he wants to save them out of it and give them a better life. He doesn't love that system. And when you and I love that system, he tells us in a James 4.4, 4, ye adulterers and adulteresses, know ye not that friendship with the world is enmity with God? Whosoever therefore will be a friend of the world is the enemy of God. And then 1 John 2.15 and 16, love not the world, neither the things that are in the world. If any man love the world, the love of the Father is not in him. For all that is in the world, the lust of the flesh and the lust of the eyes and the pride of life is not of the Father, but is of the world. There's a world system. All right, so that's spirituality. That's one of the marks of a good song leader. Not just enthusiasm. I'm not right with God, but I sure can whoop it up in church. No, 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 no. You're going to hurt the service. Okay, the other, the other one we saw in John 4, 24, so the next mark is truth. Truth. Another part of being a true worshiper is uh, truth. Uh, all the songs should be doctrinally sound, conforming to the truth of God's word. So we want to we think about what doctrines. Um, uh, even we have a story to tell to the nations. Um, even in there, it seems to, uh, it, it, talk, it talks about the, the kingdom shall come to earth, the kingdom of love and light. The second verse, we have a song to be sung to the nations that shall lift their heart to the Lord, a song that shall conquer evil, evil and shatter, shatter the spear and sword. Um, uh, some of these ideas, you're like, oh, that's, you know, we have a song that can shatter, shatter spear and sword. But some, you know, as you really study this song, it seems... There are a lot of people, and it's called uh, post-millennialism, that believe that the kingdom won't come until we, uh, until the gospel uh, makes the world ready for it. And that's, that's a false teaching. And that song, as you, as you look at it real closely, it seems to be leaning that way. Um, love divine, all loves excelling. Charles Wesley um, has, a, has a kind of a Methodist background in there of... Uh, um, let us find that second rest. Take away our bent to sinning. Um, the idea in there of, of, of entire sanctification, where we can become sinless. And we know that that's something that we won't enjoy this, time of, this side of death. Um, and then there's others. You, you want to study them and look at them. Um, I know even with different hymnals. I remember one time pulling out a hymnal. I'm like, I love this song. And then they, they used a verse that the other hymnal didn't. And the verse had something in there. <laughs> and you're like, whew, what is that? It, it, where you, you're, talk, you're talking about like Father Time and Mother Earth. And you're like, what? You know, you're, you're looking at different things. And, and you just grab a different hymnal that, that somebody wrote a, an, another verse to it. 
And you loved the verses you sang growing up out of that hymn. And this, this, verse, this, this hymn has another verse in there that you never knew. Like, what is that saying? You know? So it's good to examine the songs that your church is going to sing. Okay, next. Enthusiasm and a positive attitude. Enthusiasm and a positive attitude. Again, we mentioned this today. Our God is exciting. He's exciting. And He's creative, isn't He? You, you, you see, the, you see the, the different things out in the universe with the different galaxies and the different beautiful things, uh, the different, uh, just the organization of every little thing. It, does, it, it continually intrigues me when, I, when I, I get the Backpacker magazine, you know, and I'll look in there and I'll see some beautiful place in, in some state. I'll think, I never knew that was in that state. You know, you see pictures from different places all over the world and you think, that's gorgeous. I'm glad there's a, you know, it might be over in some uh, dangerous place of the world. And you're thinking, I'm glad there's a picture of that because I'm not going there. And I would have never seen that except for the person who risked his life to take this picture and let me see it. That's wonderful. But you think, what a beautiful, beautiful place. All over the, our God is exciting and, and altogether lovely. And our music should be exciting and reflect the God we serve. So, we can't be boring. I don't want my children to sing and to be bored to tears when we're singing about God. Because their God isn't boring. But that's what's happening in churches. And our children want some excitement. And so they're looking outside the church for it. When there's no excitement outside the church, it's cheap and, and shallow and empty and fake. And uh, what does it say in the end of Romans 6? Uh, he says, uh, do you enjoy that? The, 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 the empty, the, the, the end of that is death. The, the fruit of that type of a life. Do you, do you enjoy that? Um, why, don't, why don't you just turn to the Lord where, where the end of that is, is, uh, is, is sweetness and goodness and, and, and eternal life. Um, so, if the song leader has no enthusiasm and leads in a boring manner, the congregation will probably reflect that. Um, this is Pastor Earnhardt. Uh, he said, uh, I always avoid scolding the crowd for not singing. That only makes them resent me. You must give them a positive reason. Surely there are many for singing heartily. And don't, don't over-repeat those old cliches. Folks, let's, 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 really raise the verse, uh, re let's really raise the roof on this verse. Um, sometimes repeating that old cliche too much, they get old. Uh, help interpret the meaning of the song and why it should be sung with enthusiasm. That always brings better results. Um, sometimes uh, I did this with the memory verse the other day. I, I was teaching the fourth grade the memory verse. And you, you know they have, they have the little verse token there. And so instead of telling them, uh, they, okay, nobody looking, I kind of just, I kind of said, okay, you guys can... Um, you guys have a verse token, so if you, if you really need to, you can look at it. But some of us are going to try to do it without looking. You know, that way, like, you, you want to, I wonder if I could gamble. I wonder if I could look at it without, you know. Uh, so you, you kind of find ways to get the people to, to want to sing. Uh, and even, even little things like, okay, men, you're not going to sing this next verse. Let's have just the ladies. Men, you get to just enjoy it. And then when you can't sing, not, we're, 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 you know, we're humans. Tell me I can't do something and I want to do it. <laughs> so you can almost get people to sing by telling them they can't. You know? Um, so th this side, this side, you guys sing, and this side, just enjoy it. Um, so again, just make, make it exciting. And then uh, think of a verse. Don't always go, I, I, I've been trying to do this this year a little bit where, you know, don't always have the women sing verse 2 and the men sing verse 3. Um, have the men sing verse two and the, the ladies sing verse three or, or whatever. Have, have the high school or have the different groups. Have, have different, uh, um, you, could, you could even, now this is getting a little bit, this is more junior church-ish, but sometimes you can say, all right, I was born on the 29th. That's an odd day of the year. All right, so if you were born on an odd day of the year, you guys sing verse two, then everyone else is going to sing verse uh, the people that were born on the even days of the month, you guys are going to sing verse 3. Different things like that. I've even, even with younger people, I've, I've done, okay, everyone born January, February, March, April, May, or June, you guys are going to sing this. 
July, August, September, October, November, December, or an even month or an odd month. You, I don't know. You, don't want to, you want to be careful not to make church into a big junior church, but you also want to keep things exciting. Uh, and then, of course, uh, if, if, there's, if, if, you're, if, if you just have the kids there, you know, make it exciting. But even, even in church, look for ways to say, I want to keep this exciting without turning it, without cheapening the evening service too much. Um, but, but keep that excitement and, and, and the kids can enjoy it or whatever. Okay. Uh, and then wisdom. Wisdom. Wisdom is important. So wisdom is the next mark. Um, you want to ask God for wisdom in choosing the songs. You want to understand the different categories and the purposes of the songs. So Ephesians 5.19 tells us that there are um, two purposes for Christian singing. Um, speaking to yourselves in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, singing and making melody in your heart to the Lord. So one purpose is to exhort and encourage and instruct one another in Christ. The other is to praise the Lord. All right? So let me give you some examples of, of these real quick. Um, these are songs directed toward man. Songs directed toward man. Okay? So here are, and then underneath this, I have a couple of categories. One, songs of exhortation. Songs of exhortation. Like, uh, take the name of Jesus with you. Take the name of Jesus with you. Or, uh, there is power in the blood. There is power in the blood. Um, God will take care of you. God will take care of you. Uh, yield not to temptation. Right? That's a good one. Who are you talking to? Is that a song to the Lord? When you sing yield not to temptation? Class? Anybody? No! Should I stop singing it? I think it's, it's a, it fits one of the categories. You're singing to man. And it's a song of exhortation. So there's lots of those. Make me a channel of blessing. Um, there's also songs of encouragement. Songs of encouragement. All right. Here's some of these. Uh, um, in the sweet by and by. Uh, there's the, the face to face. That's encouraging. That's a nice song for even funerals. Um, to encourage people to remember that it's not the end. I was praying for Mrs. Durledge this morning. And just remembering that she's been without her husband for a while now. Um, and I, just, I was just saying, Lord, help her to uh, entrust everything into your hands, knowing that, that it's, it's not forever. He's not forever gone to her. Um, she'll see him again because she's saved. Um, my Savior, first of all. Songs of encouragement. My Savior, first of all. Um, when we all get to heaven. When we all get to heaven. Um, does Jesus care? Uh, my wife sang that solo verse on that last night, didn't she? Did, could you guys tell we were trying to brighten up on the chorus? Could you guys tell? You, you were gone. Um, we were trying to brighten up on that chorus because uh, Does Jesus care when my heart is... You're, you're singing the really sad part and then Oh yes, he cares. I know he cares. Like, wait, wait, wait. Your face didn't, doesn't match what you're saying. So we're like, does Jesus care? And then you get to the chorus. Oh, yes, he cares. I know he cares. His heart is touched with my grief. Okay, you try to brighten up on that. And that's, that's a song. And that's a song to people that are hurting. Does he know that when I've lost the dearest on earth to me? Does he know when I go through that, that, that pathway of darkness and unnamed fears? Yes, he cares. All right, songs of commitment. Songs of commitment. Um, where he leads, I'll follow. Where he leads, I'll follow. Or if Jesus goes with me, I'll go anywhere. Or uh, give me Jesus, give me Jesus, or, or higher ground. All right? Um, I am resolved no longer to linger charmed by this world's delight. Things that are higher, things that are nobler, these have allured my sight. Um, songs of evangelism. Songs of evangelism. These are also toward man. There's room at the cross for you. Are we singing that to God? 
Huh? Is it all right to sing that song, you think? Yeah. That's a song saying there's room at the cross for you. Kneel at the cross. Are you washed in the blood? Are you washed in the blood? Uh, then the second category is songs directed toward God. Songs directed toward God. So there are four kinds of these. Um, here, the, the first kind is uh, um, they're, they're directed, it's, it's worship directed to God or direct praise about God. So we have a glory to his name or I need thee every hour, songs like that. Okay, and then we have a meditative worship about God. Meditative worship about God. We have a, when I survey the wondrous cross, or Jesus paid it all. All that thrills my soul is Jesus, is another one. All right, then um, there are some hymns that combine encouragement to the believer and worship to God. So we have a worshipful testimony. Worshipful testimony like uh, my faith has found a resting place or leaning on the everlasting arms. Some songs are prayers to God. Prayers to God like make me a blessing or draw me nearer. Draw me nearer. All right, just a, a few concluding thoughts. Um, uh, uh, the song leader must have spiritual discernment. He must have spiritual discernment. He must be able to tell when a song is right or wrong. What the line is for this song won't be good for the church or this song will be good for the church. And let me warn you guys that one of the places bad music is creeping into churches is the special music. The special music. A lot of times a church has just conservative, wonderful hymn singing and then the special music gets up there and you think, oh my, that doesn't even seem like it fits the song service. So that's, that's something we have to watch out for. Um, there's, this, there's this quote here. David Cloud was saying that he, he was going through all these churches um, and the majority of this church, he, the, these churches he went to on this, on this certain trip, the, uh, the special music had, had, had contemporary leanings and uh, he was talking to the song leader about it because he knew them well enough that he could say something and they were like, I, I didn't even know that that was, that that was in that song. They, they, did, they just didn't know. And he was trying to say, well, you got to know. <laughs> you got to learn these things. So then, then patience and humility. Patience and humility is very important. Patience and humility. All right? So uh, you might have people that aren't as musical, and you just have to be patient with them and bring them along. Um, this is kind of where, remember with a pianist that you don't look over when she makes a mistake, like, whoa, what was that? <laughs> All right, that type of thing. You, the charity covers a multitude of sins, you know. Uh, so in, in, with the, in with singing, well, you have somebody that's not as good with piano playing or whatever, you're coming along together. You're coming along together. All right, and then uh, the last thing, liberty and diversity. Liberty and diversity. So variety is the spice of life. So there's a lot of things you can do to, to kind of change up the, uh, the song service. We talked about some of those things with the men singing, the, the women singing, some of them. Um, you can have a chorus of the month. Um, you can have songs like, Thank you, Lord, for saving my soul. Um, uh, and then even, I know recently we just had... Uh, we had, we had a song service where the, the children were allowed to make some selections over the, over the break. Okay, so let me conclude with this, uh, with this uh, quote. Keep the service alive. 
A song leader who is anticipating meeting with the Lord in the service will display that in his countenance, tone of voice, and attitude. It will catch fire with the people as well. Encourage the people to participate. Don't berate them. Encourage them. Keep the service warm. Speak to the people as friends. Don't be afraid to encourage one person by name. All the others will pay close attention to what you are saying to him. Keep a record of what you sing and don't get in a rut. Singing the same old songs all the time may be easy for you, but it will put the people into sleep mentally. Remember, you are preparing for the preaching. Starting the service with lively music and bringing the mood to a thoughtful, reflective matter before the message is a good plan. All right, so uh, just some ideas. So the marks of a good song leader. We kind of rushed through some of it, but hopefully you guys get the gist and... and uh, I'd love for you guys just to stay clean and uh, be able to lead music in such a way that many people see an exciting God by the way you guys uh, lead your music or even take part. All right, you're dismissed.